Writing with Steve. Welcome to Writing with Steve Skidmore. Hi, Steve Skidmore here. Hope you're staying safe and reading lots. Do you remember last time we talked about using history as a stimulus for your story writing? Well, you could not only go back in time, how about if you went forward in time in a book? And that's what Steve and I did with Vernon Bright and the Faster Than Light show about a boy who invented a time machine. And well, you can see here I am in my laboratory and I have invented a time machine. So we can have a little look what's going on in the future. Bear with me. Steve! Hi, it's me, Steve. Wow, oh, you're back to the future. You're from the future. That's amazing. So, what's it like? What's been happening? Oh, I had a bad haircut. Oh, well, I can see that. Hey, tell everybody, what are schools like in the future? Well, there aren't any. They got them drinking. What? No schools? Wow. I suppose that's a bit like now then. Hey, tell me some other things as well. Tell me some results of sporting events, or maybe you can even tell me the lottery numbers that came up. Tell me... Oh, no, no, no. Where are you going? Hey, maybe you could tell me what you think it would be like in the future. What will buildings be like? What will transport be like? What will happen? Will schools still exist? Or will you be at home being taught by robot teachers or robot parents? Who knows? That's what you can do with the future. You can think about it. You can use your imagination and it becomes an imaginary world. So maybe you could create something about the future. Imagine what it will be like living 100 years from now, 200 years from now, 300, 1,000 years from now, and write your story. Use your imagination, create your own imaginary world. Speaking of which, let's go back to the study. Steve Barlow and I have invented many imaginary worlds during our writing careers. And one of the worlds that we're particularly fond of is the world of Dragonsdale. Now we imagine what would a world be like without any cars, without industry, pre-industrial revolution. But we also thought that's interesting, but what about a world that didn't have horses? And instead of horses, people used dragons. They used dragons to look after, to ride, to pull carts, to compete. Dragon races, equestrian events on dragons. Then we started thinking about who would people the world, who would be the characters and what it would look like. So you've got to keep it believable in an imaginary world. Believe it or not, you can't have it too outrageous that people just go, no, I don't imagine that that could ever happen. You've got to think of the types of characters that you have. Are they humans? Are they non-humans? Are they fantasy characters, giants, ogres, magicians? You've got to visualise your worlds as well. One way that we did this was we drew a map. And here is the map of Dragonsdale. As you can see, we've got the islands of Dragonsdale, the Isles of Bressel, where all the action takes place. And we loved drawing the shapes of the islands, putting on the different names, making them up Dragonsdale, Wyvernwood, Clapperclaw. And I used to love as well drawing maps of where people lived. And here is Dragonsdale itself to give you an idea of the place that our characters work and live in. Many writers have written about imaginary worlds. Literature is full of imaginary worlds that these writers have invented, made up. You might think of some, Alice in Wonderland. You might think of Harry Potter, The Wizarding World. Neverland with Peter Pan. The Land of Oz, The Wizard of Oz. Tolkien. Now he invented a whole world called Middle Earth with hobbits, dwarves, ogres, a fantastic world. Modern day writers as well. You've got Philip Reeve whose cities, they actually move 
and try and hunt each other down. Or you may have been watching some of Philip Pullman's Northern Lights series, his Dark Materials on television, a fantastic series of books where he creates alternative realities. You also might have dystopian worlds, worlds that are set in the future. Mallory Blackman's brilliant Noughts and Crosses, um, fantastic. You may have watched as well The Hunger Games or read the books. One of my favourites is Discworld. Discworld by Terry Pratchett, a brilliant world inhabited by all sorts of creatures. These are worlds that you could imagine if you were writing your books. I love maps in books, as I said, and it comes from when I was a kid reading books. I used to love reading books that had maps in them. For instance, the Narnia books, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, looking at the, the map of Narnia, where the characters would go. And what about Middle Earth as well? J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth, fantastic, in The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. I used to follow the journeys that the characters would make. I really loved those because it helped me get into the world. Now you might want to try that. Why don't you invent your own imaginary world but draw a map? It might be an island, it might be a city, it might be a whole land, a continent, a world. And that can be your start of your story. And once you've created your map, your imaginary world, you can then decide who actually peoples that world. Who lives in it? Are they fantasy creatures? Are they human beings? Are they creatures that talk? You can put anything into your imaginary world because it's your imagination. It's your world. You decide what happens in there. So why don't you have a go at that? Think about the type of peoples that are in there, the world that you're going to create. Draw your map, maybe draw some pictures of your characters. Give your characters names that are part of that world. I'm looking forward to finding out what your world is called as well, of course. Why don't you send some ideas in to us? And I look forward to seeing those at some point. Next time, I'm going to be talking about how you get from your house into your imaginary world.